One moment, please. You know me, my uh, F-bombs. Who's the, uh, who's the young lady speaking? She's All right, Rick, we're ready for you. All right, guys, welcome uh, to another show, a Thursday night show. Uh, today, uh, we're going to do something different. Uh, you know, we have a, a cast of characters uh, always hang with. Uh, today, is, uh, uh, in my garage, is uh, Steve, Tom, and Rocky. And so we thought it would be fun to uh, uh, kind of get to know these guys that I hang with. Either bad or good, they are my friends. So... Uh, don't judge me, uh, but uh, they're dear to my heart. I love them. And so this is, you know, something to do. Along with this, uh, 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 Gary's still a part of it. Gary, can you say hello? Hey, guys. How are you doing? That's enough out of you, Gary. That's enough. Okay. I'm going on mute. <laughs> okay. And uh, what we'll do is uh, if you have any questions for me, uh, maybe you'll have a question for one of the guys that you want to know, uh, de definitely uh, let us know. But uh, uh, we'll start uh, by, uh, you know, introducing the first character on the hot seat. And that's going to be Rocky. Rocky. Oh, man. I always love being first. OK. Hello. Uh, get to your own All right, I screen. Get to the hot so that's seat? The, uh, the hot seat. OK. Is this the hot seat? Uh, so uh, we'll start simple, very yeah. easy. OK. What's your name and what do you do? Rocky Balboa, and <laughs> I'm a mortgage loan officer for Bank of America. Okay. All right. So, uh, how long have you been a friend of the leg uh, legendary Ricky? Let me see. So, um, I moved back down here. I can't see you. So back in uh, 2012. So, I think I met you in 2012. Okay. So we're coming up on eight years of uh, buddy marriage. Great. Friendship would be good. Uh, too. Well, yeah, so yeah, friendships. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So what we'll do is going to ask yeah. you uh, three questions. Oh, uh, two are going to be kind of personal mm -hmm. questions. Okay. And one is going to be about what I do, uh, cigars. Okay. And so uh, uh, the first question I'm going to ask you. What is your favorite sport to watch? Favorite sport has got to be football. Um, I am from Ohio, so Ohio State. And boo, yeah. boo. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, okay. Uh, it's got to be football. Okay. It's got to be football, so. All right, I love so. the Buccaneer and my old Browns, Cleveland Browns. Okay, stop right there. Enough of that. Okay. Uh, so uh, now the second question is going to be a tobacco question. Ooh. There is a tobacco plant. And we talk, guys, you have to realize when we're in this garage where I'm always sharing this information, I don't think they really listen to me and it doesn't hear to them. Uh, it bounces off their little head and rolls away. But we're going to see if they're maintaining any of this information. All right, Rock. Yes. There is three sections yes. of a tobacco plant. Okay. For a free cigar. Yes. <laughs> name two out of the three. If you pick all three, that's two cigars. Ooh, okay. So we got uh, Hero. Mm, ho hold on. Hero, Hero. Like, guys. Lajero. Lajero. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Okay. Lajero. Uh, that's one. Zero. No, I, I can't allow you to. You, yeah, you have to name one the right way. Yeah. Susan. <laughs> I say Lajero. Lajero. Yes, that's yes. one. Yes. Um. Vero. Vero. Kinda. Kinda. Vero. You That's thinking the about uh, the bottom of the tobacco plant oh, the called? Yeah. That is called what? Vero. Not Vero. Vero. Vero ground. So how about the uh, middle of the tobacco plant? 
is uh, if you're uh, kind of a, a Spanish word for second. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on, I need, I need this. This is great uh, TV. I, 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 I hope you agree. Right. This is great. Seiko. 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 All right. So, Volado, Seiko. Okay. Seiko, Volado, the, the bottom, Bolado. Seiko, and there's going to be a Lajero. Lajero. All right. So, uh, uh, a bunch of cigars? Nope. We oh, had uh, okay. one cigar for you coming your way. Right. Your last question on the hot seat, unless the fans of CL has a question for Rocky, yeah. and you can please ask him anything you want. <laughs> if you're going to put, uh, put to death because you smoked the wrong cigar, it's not because you murdered somebody, but right. you have to go to the chair. What would be a long cigar? What would be your last dinner? It would have to be. No, it would have to be. That's going to be a CAO. I hope. It would have to be the Orlano. Okay, that is a cigar. Like I said, follow the bonds and ball. Last dinner. What is your last dinner? Last dinner. It'd probably be. My new recipe that I put or I gave to you, okay. which you still never answered, right. would have to be the smoked meatloaf. And how do you smoke that meatloaf? With a, my Traeger grill, my Bartella Traeger grill. It is the bomb. All right. Bomb. So, Gary, help me out, my friend. Tell me, a fan wants to know something from Rocky before he's out the hot seat. So Raymond would like to know what his top two favorite cigars are. Oh, good, good. I'm very interested in that. <laughs> so what is your, well, and you can include every cigar that you ever smoked because yes. there's a special cigar yes. that you were smoking the first time right. we met. That's, but still my number one favorite yeah. is the Philly chocolate. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, it's got to be the Orlano, okay. Without a doubt, that Orlano is the best cigar I think I've ever. It's got to be the best cigar, okay. I've okay. Ever. And uh, that's and, one, um, I tell you what, the uh, Nicaragua, CEO of Nicaragua, is uh, my second favorite. Perfect. Cigar. So, uh, do me a favor, yeah. uh, get off the hot seat and okay. pick you two cigars from that bag, all right? Because I answered CAO, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 All right, nice. All right, guys. So, uh, uh, Gary, any questions for me uh, so far? Yeah, actually. Um, so, you guys mentioned the Oriana a couple times, and we've got um, one question for you. Um, someone would like to know if you could talk a little bit about the Oriana and then how that cigar is different from the rest of the Amazon line. So, when you look at that cigar, uh, we started with the uh, trilogy. Uh, we had the Basin, we had the Puma. And we had the anaconda. The anaconda had to go away after the first year because the wrapper that we chose for that cigar, they don't go uh, anymore. So we just simply uh, changed the the wrapper, kept the blend that we were using on the uh, anaconda, and but uh, we changed that wrapper, and that is the uh, the launch of that cigar. Unfortunately, like I said last week. Uh, we're never going to be able to uh, launch this cigar again, but I just heard some good news that uh, there is hope that we'll do one more uh, uh, kind of um, uh, launch of the Amazon Basin. So we're hoping, crossing our fingers, that we're going to be uh, able to do that. And if we do that, it's going to be in June or July. And uh, we're talking to the factory right now if we have access to that tobacco. Okay. Hey, it's burnt. You're in the hot seat. Not yet. I know. Uh, get away. Lie. Get away. <laughs> hey, what's going on? All right. So uh, next up Thank is you, my dear friend Tom. Thank you, uh, Tom, you are Tom in the hot seat. In the hot seat. <clears throat> hey, everyone. All right. So Tom, what's your name, and what do you do for a living? My name is Tom, and I'm actually retired. What? Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. All right. So, two personal uh, questions and one tobacco question. All right. So, which one do you want first? Uh, let's go one personal. Okay. Personal. What 
movie have you ever watched and, and cried? What movie Ooh. have I ever yeah. watched? That's and it movie. brought you to tears. That's a good every movie I ever watched. Now you Se Secretariat. Really? Yeah, yeah. Secretariat. Uh, Call me that first. Yes. Okay. Uh, Share that triple, story triple with us. Winner and um, born the same year uh, as I was, 1970. And he was, uh, he was a purebred and he was a beautiful horse. And he actually set the three track records that year. Uh, when he won the Triple Crown, and I believe two of the three still stand today as track records. Uh, he won the third leg, which I believe was the Belmont, by 30 and a half lengths. Um, yeah. But then, uh, unfortunately, after going to stud, and he eventually uh, was put down. And um, hmm. he's to date one of the only horses that are buried uh, with, with his entire body, as far as I'm aware. They typically take the head and bury the head of the horse, but he was buried uh, with his entire body. And at that point in the movie, I actually cried. So hopefully uh, the next two answers will be a little bit shorter. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's a great, uh, that's a great uh, question. That's a great, you know what? Cheers, bro. I, I never no, I watched the movie, never. but uh, you know what? Now that I know that uh, tore your heart apart, we're going to watch it in the garage one great. time. I just wanted to see you cry. Great. All right, so uh, now a tobacco question. Typically, in fermentation, how long is that process take us to ferment tobacco? Um, to ferment tobacco, I believe, takes anywhere from six to nine months. Potentially longer, but six to nine months. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Well, no, you're spot on. Right on. Oh, thank you so Check much for listening to Give me sometimes. So that's a, you just won yourself a cigar. Someone like paid attention in the garage. Yeah. All right. I would, I would not have gotten the other question. I'll tell you. All right. So <laughs> question number three to get off the hot seat is what is your favorite donut? My favorite donut would have to be. Uh, Please don't. And coconut. I've never. It's a I've never. Donut I've, and I've never. And coconut sprinkles. Ooh. And by who? Who makes those? I honestly do like not. Krispy Kreme, Dunkin' do Donuts. It's called a chocolate coconut. Okay, uh, guys. I hope that uh, that's the truth. I've never heard of that donut, but you know, <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know Tom to be a liar, but uh, so uh, Gary. Any questions for Tom? Yes. So we've got a question from Gregory, and he would like to know what he likes to drink. If he drinks whiskey, and if so, what whiskeys does he like? Uh, actually, I'm more of a Scotch drinker. Uh, so um, I will drink whiskey uh, occasionally if it's presented to me, uh, but I typically do drink uh, single malt Scotch whenever I have the job. What is your favorite if you had to uh, choose one? Uh, one of the Glens. Okay. Glen Livet, Glen Gary, you know. Okay. Just one of the Glens. Glen Gary. It's actually a movie. Line. That's a great. It's that's a, a great. That's a great movie. Just that's a great movie. movie. All right. So uh, I think you survived the hot seat. Uh, get your cigar in the bag and do me a favor and don't do what like Rocky did. Open the bag up and select your cigar. If you just dip your hand in the bag and pull out a cigar. Will do. All right. So next up. Tough crowd. Next up is a true dear firm of uh, mine that saved my life. Literally. Yeah, really. I, I was choking to death. He saved my life. So Bruce Bush, come to the hot seat. The bird. Hey. The bird. This, is, this is exciting. Uh, why would you move that seat? And <laughs> you, yeah, you did. You did. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. <laughs> wow, it's not like I, you know, ripped up a picture of the Pope or something. No, you, you, just, you know what? Just sit down. Just sit down. I'm sitting down. All right, so. I can stand. So, you're going to have three questions. Ask you. You have per uh, personal questions and one tobacco question. For my first tobacco question, I'm going to ask you, 
what is my least favorite rapper in the world? Wow, that's pretty personal. Your least favorite rapper in the world. I guarantee I'm just saying, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Cameroon. Yes. Give that guy wow, a, man, a the beer. Cigar. Yeah. And I, know the cigar. and I know why it's the antithesis of a Dominican rapper in the way that a Dominican rapper Okay, 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 so the first um, question I want to ask you is who other than Winston is your all-time favorite Buccaneer player? Well, James Winston's not in the top 50, so I don't you were know crying right. the day that we okay. let him go. Oh. you were crying. What do you do? You, do you know me? Yeah, I, I, do. That? No, I, I wanted Marcus Mariota in the first place. Uh, my favorite, all he's a winner, he was a winner too. Yeah, huh? I, yeah. I, yeah. all right, so but uh, I was pr probably Derek Brooks, I mean, he was a gentleman on off the field and he never talked shit, he did what he had to do. And 12 Pro Bowls, NFL Defensive Player of the Year, yeah, Super Bowl champ, the hard to best that resume. Yeah, like okay, that. uh, I don't know, uh, good. I answer, I don't know, but uh, yeah, yeah, so good. good. <laughs> I just got a high okay. five from Daniel yeah. somewhere. Thank you, brother. I love you. All right, so the last question, the last personal question. What was the first lie that you told your mother and you got away with? Or a lie that you told your mother that you feel bad that you lied to your mother but you didn't ever correct that lie. And she still <laughs> believes that you are actually a graduate of college. And we know wow. that's not true. Wow. <laughs> that's pretty good, several man. Degrees. You know, <laughs> this is really hard for me because I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I don't really lie. Oh, that's I'm a gonna, lie right there. That's a lie right there. Um, There's no yeah. way you're going to say to me you never mother. lied to your mother. No, no, I know. No, I lied. No, it's not. I've lied. They're little white lies, but nothing profound. That I can okay. What? I generally don't lie. A lie is a lie in the uh, the eyes of God. I, I so know, a lot of white lie, lie just, or so one that. lie. Uh -huh. One lie. Okay, I told her one time that I missed the bus in actuality. I overslept. <laughs> There it is. Now I got a question for you, Rick. No, no, there's no question. Yes, for there me. is. Does that's Darren how you know, Allen know, know that you rang his know what? Yeah, it's a, you know, <laughs> that's uh, that's Johnny Cash. Right? That's oh, Johnny, Johnny Cash. Cash. He's dead too. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, Gary, uh, hopefully not. But any questions for Bruce? <laughs> um, so this is, I guess, for both of you. But who is the biggest talker in the garage? Mm -hmm. well, you're looking at one and two right now. <laughs> Three is a distant third. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, uh, uh, do you want to share the story of the time you saved my life? I would love to. Can I? Please make it short, bro. It's only an hour. Every show. story I tell is short, man. Okay, so I come over to Rick's house, and Rick's in the kitchen with Susan. They're eating chicken and rice. And All right, like that. unannounced. Yeah, unannounced. It was. It was not unannounced. We differ on that, but whatever. So I come into the garage, right? And I grab a beer. And Rick beforehand's like, I'll be out in a minute. I'm just finishing up my chicken and rice, whatever. I'm like, okay, whatever, that's fine. So I get a pork beer, sandwich. And I, a pork sandwich. <laughs> it was a pork sandwich, that's you're right. right. So I go I in the dying. I go in the fridge, right? And I open it up and I pull a beer. And I hear Susan screaming, go, oh my God, help, 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 help. Either aliens were attacking the house, or I thought his dog Ziggy, which is a labradoodle, was attacking Rick and grabbing him by the neck. Neither one of those are very plausible. I didn't know what the hell was going on. So Susan drags Rick's like half dead carcass out into the garage, right? And I see he's choking. And there was a car here. Susan's car is in the drive. So I jumped over the car. And if you see me, I'm 250 pounds. Me say I jumped over the car. I saying a whole lot. And I grabbed Rick like a plastic doll and I started doing the Heimlich maneuver on him. And the pork went. <laughs> That was not. As soon as it hit the ground, Ziggy, his dog, ate it. <laughs> <laughs> so, my version of that story, the, it, when I tell it, I can see tears coming out of everybody's eyes. But uh, that story, that version, is kind of in a miss because, number one, it was a pork sandwich, not chicken and yellow rice. Number two... Susan didn't drag me out to the garage. I walked out to the right. garage. It looked like a drag. And I, I remember no, the lights. No, you drag. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is my show. All right, so get off the hot seat, get a cigar, and out of there. 
Bye, so, but that's a, a, a great time. Uh, thank you so much Don't for being, yeah, show, man, so. Uh, Thank you so much for <laughs> being a part of this. All right, so uh, before we go to the last uh, character that I uh, know, uh, we're going to just uh, open up to uh, to Q and A's. Uh, so, Gary, anything? Um, yeah, so this is a question I don't think I've ever even asked you, but what was your first cigar that you ever smoked? Hmm. Uh, being from Tampa, it was an 858 from, uh, uh, from uh, um, Puente. It was an 858, and I think it was a 19, maybe 81, 82 was the first cigar I've ever smoked. But before that, uh, I remember going to my grandfather and grandmother's house, and there were always aroma of uh, cigars because there were rollers in uh, Tampa. And I remember going to uh, visit my grandfather, and he was always smoking the cigar after work. And my grandfa uh, my grandmother smoked one cigar a, a week. And so uh, and it was on a Sunday after lunch, and I remember that, uh, uh, that uh, sight of my grandmother uh, sitting, uh, we're playing in the backyard, and uh, I remember uh, smelling the uh, aroma for the cigar and uh, uh, pitching her uh, smoking the cigar. Yeah. So, A58 from Fuente was my first cigar ever smoked. That's a great question. I don't think you get that, that question often. So, any more? Yeah. So, you've got a fan that loves the steel horse, okay. and they are curious how you came up with the blend and the sizes for that line. So that was easy because what we wanted to do, we knew the uh, the success that we had on Flathead. We wanted to extend that line, uh, but we already had the right uh, four or five sizes at that time. So, uh, and when I was talking to, and I was introducing um, some of these cigars, uh, what I remember, a lot of people were coming up to me with Flathead. You're talking more to truck guy and carb guy. But we're bike guys and girls, and you don't. I don't know if you know this, but Harley Davidson introduced a flathead engine before Ford did, and so the light went off and uh, went back to marketing and say, you know, guys, if we're going to extend this line, let's talk uh, to the bikers out there. And so the name uh, Steel Horse came about when I was working with a, a rep uh, in Chicago, Matt Bender. And I said, I'm pro, I'm in charge of, you know, launching this uh, new cigar. It's kind of it'd be a, a, you know, extension of a flathead. And I'm just struggling. And it, it's kind of relates back to bikes and all that. So I'm struggling with the name. It says, hey, bro, a lot of people call their bikes uh, steel horse. Uh, so uh, that was the word. Now, the sizes, we kind of copied the, uh, the sizes that uh, was very popular when we launch uh, the uh, CEO flathead. So great question, great question. All right, you're gonna like this next one. So Jake would like to know, what is your best fried chicken story? Oh. <laughs> fried chicken. You know what, it's not a story, but uh, I was just watching an episode of an old uh, Steinfeld. And I don't know if you ever uh, saw the, uh, the show that they, had uh, Kenny Rogers open across the street and the light from the sign was shining into Kramer's uh, apartment. And uh, so he traded apartments with J Jerry and, but he didn't uh, let Jerry know that he was secretly going to Kenny Rogers place and buying chicken. And there's one scene uh, or two scenes that you see uh, Kramer eating Kenny Rogers chicken in bed and that is what i'd love to do so when i'm on the road uh because we do events it's late at night so all the you know good restaurants are closed only open is mcdonald's uh you know wendy's uh taco bell or kfc and i always go to kfc and i'd love to take my bucket of chicken back to my room and uh my bucket of chicken and the room and eat uh, that chicken in bed. So that's uh, uh, that's my favorite chicken story. So thank you so much for knowing that uh, my favorite dinner. If I had to go and say, what's your favorite last dinner would be fried chicken. 
All right. So this next question is from Dale, and he remembers a story you were talking about from your Asian tour that you did last year. And he mentions, uh, well, he mentioned that you were talking about how the Chinese coveted the Pilon cigar. Yes. And he was curious as to the reasoning behind that, if you ever found out what exactly it was that they loved about that cigar. I think a, a combination of the the flavor of the cigar remind him uh, of a lot of, of Cuban cigars that they smoked in the past. Uh, we don't really know. I think the presentation, they, they, uh, I know that they said to me over and over and over, the, just the look, the style of your band, the box represents to us a class or high end. And so I think that the combination of the great blend that Cologne offers, but uh, also the presentation is simple, but very elegant. And so if you've ever been to China, what I noticed is uh, they like everything high end and all that they drink, uh, you know, if they drink in spirits, it's always top shelf. Uh, they're wearing clothes or cars they will buy is all top shelf. So whatever reason uh, they chose Pallone to represent a, a cigar that they take to, uh, uh, you know, uh, parties or celebrations. And everybody knows that that's something special that we're going to smoke and enjoy a special cigar. Uh, maybe, uh, again, uh, maybe it's a lack of cigars that they have. But, you know, at that time, they had access to FSX. They have access to uh, uh, Padron, uh, but for, you know, in Cuba, of course. But for some reason, the packaging, the band, the blend represent what they think is living life good. That's a great question, though. Great question. All right. So one of your fans wants to know if you are a professional wrestling fan. And if so, who is your favorite wrestler? I was. I was in the 70s. Uh, I didn't pick it up uh, in the 80s and 90s. Uh, so my old school, uh, my favorite was an old guy uh, uh, called, uh, oh my God, I'm gonna, help me out. Uh, he did the Atomic uh, Elbow, Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes, the American yeah. Dream. Yes, yeah, he was my favorite. So uh, more of uh, the, uh, the old school wrestling when it was uh, kind of segmented around the country until the the uh, group of uh, whatever it's called now, you know, is global. Uh, but uh, it may be Hulk Hogan today if I had to uh, pick somebody for that because he's from Tampa. He lives in St. Pete and Clearwater. So I think uh, it would be Hulk Hogan uh, today uh, is my favorite. I don't know if he even knows uh, he's wrestling anymore. I don't think so. He's so old. Um, so this next one is actually a good question about um, one of the processes that the tobacco goes through. But can you talk a little bit about how tobacco is picked and then harvested and what the process of like the, the leaf, what that goes through? That's a great question. A question that doesn't uh, you get, uh, you know, ask a lot. So there's two ways to uh, harvest tobacco. Uh, but, uh, you know, two ways that we really harvest tobacco. Uh, maybe there's other ways, but uh, these are the ways that I've been taught. Uh, one is called priming. And priming means when the tobacco plant is fully grown, we go out to the field and we only pick the set, uh, you know, first row. And the row to us is not a row, it's a priming. So that priming or that row of tobacco leaves has about uh, two or three uh, tobacco leaves and we harvest that and we pick it throughout the uh, uh, the uh, farm and we wait a week and we go back into the field and pick the second priming or the second row two or three week, uh, leaves and we wait. So about uh, four weeks or three weeks you'll see a stalk and tobacco leaves but all the leaves in the bottom has already been harvested they're gone, and what it does is the nutrients in the soil uh, don't, you know, it doesn't have to worry about every tobacco plant because it now has lack of the tobacco plant. So all the tobacco plant or the leaves are remaining really start to be uh, more flavor, more bolder, and that's the reason uh, Lajero, because that's the last of the tobacco that uh, plant that we harvest. It's been on that plant for about anywhere from six to eight weeks longer than the other plants. So it really gets uh, some nutrients from the soil and it's just really making that tobacco uh, leaf very thick and very oily. 
The other way is going to call it stock cut. And we're going to go to the field, fully grown uh, tobacco plant, what like Christmas tree. We go to the base, cut it, and hang it upside down. And what we do that, uh, the reason we do that often is uh, sugars and starch settle in the bottom of your tobacco plant. When we turn that tobacco plant upside down, all that starch runs throughout the uh, tobacco plant and it's going to allow us to create maduros because we're going to turn that starch into sugars. And those are the two, two ways that we harvest tobacco today. But that was a great question. Okay. And so before we get to the next question, we want to remind all your fans to log on to Cigar World. And this month, Rick is doing a Lotus Lighter giveaway. And he's got these awesome lighters that all you have to do is log in, register to become a um, user on Cigar World if you haven't done that already, and then join the CAO group. And that automatically enters you to win. And they're giving out a bunch of those this month. Perfect. Um, so then, so um, if we're going to uh, go on, because Gary, I'm going to save you for the hot seat last. And I'm going to say now, Steve, welcome to the hot seat. Okay. All right, so we're going to start simple. I have to move back like, like this. Bruce. Simple. Yeah. Say your name and what do you do? Uh, hey, my name is uh, Steve. I live here in Tampa, originally from Miami Beach, Florida. Um, uh, I own a, a, and operate a child care facility here in Tampa, more of a school. Uh, I retired about oh, well, a year thank ago. Thank you so much for doing that. For and uh, my wife runs our program now, but uh, we're still providing child care to all of our first responders, our doctors and nurses, and all of the essential uh, workers out there, so that they have a place for to bring their kids. And uh, and uh, pretty much, I just uh, play golf and smoke cigars now. Okay, that's good. So, uh, three questions on the hot seat. Uh, the first personal question is. When was your first drink and what was that first drink and how old were you when you took that first drink? I was 14. I can remember this specifically because I was I sure living did. with my father at the time in Los Angeles. <laughs> and uh, he had a big party and uh, he walked me, we had a bartender at the house and catering and he walked me up to the bartender. I was 14 years old. And he says to the bartender, this is my son, Steve. And you give him anything that he asks for. And so my first drink was a vodka gimlet. I had, uh, needless to say, I had quite a few of those until the gimlet wasn't necessary and I was just drinking vodka. Maybe one of the worst experiences of my whole life. But uh, yeah, vodka gimlet was my first drink. Uh, we're not going to judge you uh, for that uh, first drink. Uh, if I ever see you order that uh, drink on, you know, uh, a bar, I'll slap it out of your hand mm -hmm. because that is a, a not a man's drink. I'm not about to drink right now. All right, so uh, the question about uh, cigars. Name three countries that produce wrappers for cigars. Oh, the, the United States. Okay. Uh, Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. And the DR. Ooh. Uh, no, no, no wrappers from the Dominican Republic. Yeah, but... Uh, uh, you know what? Not that General Cigar has. Honduras. Then. Perfect. 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 And so that's uh, uh, so that's a uh, one more last personal question. What should that be? Okay. How did you uh, meet your wife? Oh God, I, I know we're limited on time here, but actually, uh, <laughs> I was. Uh, I had just moved back to Miami from California. I got invited to my cousin's wedding. Uh, I asked an old girlfriend to go with me and uh, we went to the wedding, got in an argument with my old girlfriend, took her home, dropped her off, went back to the wedding where this uh, young lady kept on turning around to look at me. Finally, I asked her to dance. We danced for a couple hours, uh, hung out for a while, uh, took her to her car, got her phone number and uh, the, and, and, and she, the rest was history. And as it turns out, the girl that I took to the wedding originally ended right. up marrying the, the girl that was my original <laughs> date, ended up marrying my uncle and became my aunt. <laughs> Absolutely that's, true story. That's <laughs> creepy, but, but we're talking about that later on. Uh, how long ago <laughs> was that? 
Uh, gosh, um, I've been married for thir about 31 years now, so that's about 30, 32 years ago. Yeah, perfect. All right, guys, so uh, you just won yourself a cigar. Thank you so much for being a part of the hot seat. Thanks, Rick. It's great. Uh, 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 hold on. Uh, Gary, any questions for uh, Steve? Uh, let's see if there's any for Steve. Um, yes. What is your funniest memory with Rick, and how long have you guys known each other? Uh, I guess I've been coming to the garage uh, for about, uh, oh my gosh, uh, seven or eight years now. Um, and uh, I don't know if I can tell the funniest okay. story, but um, <laughs> you know, we, there, there, there are so many nights that we get together in the garage for mostly for, for sporting events. Uh, and there, there are so many funny stories, but uh, remember, uh, this is a family. Yeah, show. yeah, no, I, yeah, that's so why that's I, say, a, I can't tell the funniest one. Yeah, line. yeah, so. But, uh, but uh, I, you, I can't pinpoint it. Our, our interactions usually aren't that hilarious. So, you know, we, we come to the garage and we enjoy cigars and we get some lessons uh, about, the, you know, about the tobacco, about how it was made, what he's working on next. And, uh, and we really enjoy that. Uh, so, that's just one of my favorite places to come. It's, it's a great way to get out of the house, come and have a drink, watch some sports, smoke some amazing cigars, and uh, spend some time with a lot of really good friends. All these guys in the garage here tonight, this is all, you know, if, if, if we had the leveled uh, membership levels to the garage, these would all be the diamond level yeah, guys. I agree, I agree. Uh, these are, these are, are, are the best guys uh, not to discount any of the other guys that, that come here, but uh, Tom and Rocky and, and Bruce and Rick and I, we, we share a special, special friendship and, uh, and, uh, and, and ob obviously uh, an immense uh, love for great cigars. Let me ask you this. Uh, do you get excited uh, when I bring uh, blends home to, for us to share and work on? Is that something that you enjoy or you enjoy the process after we launch a cigar? One of my, one or two of my favorite nights in the garage have had to be when uh, Rick had printed up questionnaires, um, surveys, and we would smoke cigars. At, at the time, they weren't printing the, the label. It would be a little white label around a, a test cigar, uh, and there'd be handwriting on the label, and we would light up a cigar and smoke it for 10 minutes. He's all right, you guys put that out now. I want, I want you to light this one up. All right, put that one out. You, know, you don't even get to smoke the cigar. You smoke like an inch off the front and then we're trying something else. And then we would have to go to the paper and write down the flavors that we experienced, the, you know, whether or not it, it draws well, uh, how, how it tastes, uh, the overall uh, feeling uh, that you got when you smoke these cigars. And, and so I kind of feel in a way like some of the guys here helped to help to design some of the blends that uh, everybody is, is really enjoying now. Uh, I, I know that we did those, so we did those experiments with, uh, with, with, well, we did them well, not, only with, not only with, with, with CAO, but with some of the other, with some of the other general cigar uh, blends as well, because uh, Rick's experience is not limited to CAO, obviously. So we've tried a lot of different cigars and we've gone through a lot of different blends. Some of them were two-tone, uh, some of them were uh, torpedoes or, you know, some, some smaller blends, some larger, some larger size. My, fa you know, my favorite cigar to smoke right now, because uh, I play a lot of golf, it would have to be the Flathead 770. He's a it's, it's an amazing, he, he does, phenomenal yeah. cigar for the golf course. You light that up on the first hole and you still have it on hole number 17, uh, depending on how fast you smoke. So, but what an amazing smoke. And you can put it down for a few minutes when get out of the cart and you come back and that cigar is still lit. You're not constantly relighting it. Uh, it just burns great, smokes great, tastes great. Amazing. But I just shared a box outside of CEO with you uh, the other day and uh, your son and you were here and I gave you a box of the Punch Grand Cru. I smoked, that was the first Never cigar two. I smoked when I walked in the door. Tonight. What do you think about that cigar? It's an amazing cigar. Yeah. Absolutely delicious. It's I've been on the market for about 30 years, and it's the only one reason a cigar lasts for 30 years is because it's a great blend. It's a legendary blend. So if you have the opportunity to 
branch out and uh, seek out uh, other cigars to enjoy, especially if you just wanted to, you know, kind of stick it to the uh, general cigar uh, portfolio. Uh, reach for the yeah. Grand Cru Number Two by Punch. I think you're going to love that cigar. It's a legendary blend. So, hey, uh, uh, Steve, thank you so much. You're off the hot seat. Go away. Thanks for having us, Rick. What a great experience to be here with you tonight. It's amazing. <laughs> All so we friends. have a, a good question, Rick. So we've okay. got um, someone that's asking what all you guys are smoking tonight. If you guys are all smoking the same cigar, if you guys are all smoking different cigars. No, I'm smoking the uh, the flathead right now, uh, the uh, Cam Chef. Uh, I think... Uh, Bruce this, gave me this when he came in. It's okay. not, a, not a CAO cigar. Uh, I think he got that from when uh, he went to from the DR. When, when uh, he yeah. was in the Dominican yeah. Republic. So yeah, no, you know, uh, to, uh, these guys do uh, bring uh, a lot of cigars to the uh, garage. And uh, what I don't want them to do is bring a, a CAO cigar. So, uh, um, you know, Steve is always sharing his cigars with me. So he's a, a cigar smoker. So he's reaching out for Puente, for, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Padron, uh, Rocky Patels, and he's always sharing these cigars with us. And so I love that because I don't want these guys to think that you cannot smoke a foreign cigar in my garage. All I want you to do is be a cigar smoker. Now I have access to CAO cigars, uh, of course, and so it's easy for you to, you know, uh, get a free a cigar from me. But uh, if you want to share a cigar with me, the next time you, you, you know, you you see me and you have a favorite cigar and you want to share that cigar with me, please do because I love cigars. Uh, before I started working in the cigar business, so I'm a fan of that. So that's a great question. But uh, yeah, all right. Peace out. All right, Gary. Any more questions? Yeah, we actually have a bunch of questions tonight. Right. Um, so we've got a great question from Gregory, and he wants to know um, what the amount of time is um, from the time like a seed is planted till the final picking and when a cigar is made. Like, what is that process like from start to finish? Uh, depending on, we're, we're talking about uh, filler or wrapper, because filler you can normally use in less than six months after it's grown. So after harvest, a filler, uh, you can put that filler in production. Uh, when you're talking about wrapper, and to grow a, uh, a tobacco plant uh, from seed to fully grown, it's about three months. And so after that, so, but that's filler. And so in wrapper, the same growing time, but now we're going to age that wrapper. So the, you know, the minimum that uh, General Cigar ages wrapper is for two years up to five years, uh, sometimes seven years. And so if you look at the Oriano, that's a seven year old wrapper that we're using on that uh, cigar. But uh, the normal time is about uh, anywhere from two years to five years. So that is after fermentation, after, uh, you know, after fermentation, we kind of uh, bulk this uh, cigar up into the bell. The bell weighs about, it looks like a bell of hay and uh, we, store that uh, bell uh, for two years, three years, four years, five years, 10 years. So uh, the question is always asked, what's the difference between a $5 cigar and a $10 cigar? And the you know, simple answer that, uh, to that question is, the, the longer I age tobacco, the more money I have to charge for that cigar because all that labor, we cannot uh, just uh, bell that tobacco up throw it in a room and look at our watch says, guys, we'll be back in uh, two years. We have to rotate all the tobacco because if we don't rotate that tobacco, all these bells, uh, fermentation starts because weight, pressure, heat starts to build up. And all of a sudden what you thought you had two years ago, if you don't rotate that tobacco, you thought you had a light brown wrapper. And when you open it up, all of a sudden it's a deep black wrapper. So we have to, uh, you know, always constantly uh, turn that tobacco and we'll turn it every two to three months uh, that we have to go, depending on the temperature outside, sometimes we have to uh, flip that tobacco every month. And so it takes uh, about uh, two to three weeks to rotate uh, 200 or 300,000 bales of the tobacco that we're aging. And so once you're done, 
you start again. Once you're done, you start it again and on and on and on. So all that labor has to go back to your cigar, but that's a great question. It really is. All right. So Henry wants to know if you have a secret favorite machine made cigar. That's an interesting question. Uh, you know what? I, I've never smoked in a machine. Uh, you know what? I'm not I'm a lion because I, I was smoking some of the little uh, cigars that we make uh, from Macadoodle. And uh, those are machine made cigars. Takes about uh, you know, 10 or 15 minutes to smoke that cigar. And, uh, and you know, but uh, uh, like a Philly Blunt or a Hampa Tampa and all that, I've never smoked in that. But you know, there's fans are every cigar, so I'm never going to judge anybody that's enjoyed. Even Rocky, you know, he was so embarrassed the time he walked out to me and said, "I don't know what you did, but I love myself some Philly chocolate cigars." You know what? There's a fan for everything. So if you enjoy a machine made cigar, uh, enjoy it. You know, uh, there's no problem because it's uh, I'm sure it's a great cigar. But uh, I tend not to smoke uh, machine made cigars. All right, so Joseph has a great question for you. So he wants to know when you're working on a new blend, is the tobacco fully aged and fermented? Um, and if not, how can you tell what the end product will be like? And then also, does the end product change over time, like as it continues the aging process? Uh, so for the first part, um, uh, yeah, it is all A. So if I choose a wrapper to apply to a, a cigar that we're working on, we're going to reach for that two-year-old, three-year-old tobacco. We're not going to reach for a new tobacco that's fresh out of the farm because it's going to be too bitter. So we age that. So yeah, every tobacco is aged. But again, when you're rolling a cigar on the table, you have to moisten the wrapper to apply it to your cigar. So what happens is your filler and your binder is dry, but your wrapper is very moist. And the more moisture that you give to uh, your cigar, the less flavor. Kind of like if you take a shot of bourbon and uh, you sip it neat and uh, said, bro, that is a great bourbon. But the next uh, shot you're gonna take, I stop you and fill that shot with water, what I do? dilute that flavor. So the wetter your tobacco is, the more diluted your flavor is. So we have to get through that. So we know by trial and error and smoking so many cigars, we can smoke that cigar from the table fresh like that, but we know we're going to be able to divide that bitterness out and taste that tobacco and say, you know what, I think this is good. And so what we'll do is marry that tobacco for about a week in the drying room and then smoke it again. Uh, but uh, that's a great question. Uh, the second part of the question, the only reason you ate cigars in your personal humidor is to get more flavor. And so typically it's like a bottle of wine. Sometimes when you go to your wine shop or your liquor store and say, you know what, my boss is coming over. I think I'm going to get, uh, uh, you know, a raise or a promotion. I want to celebrate tonight with my boss. So you reach for that bottle of wine and the wine salesman says, you know, whoa, 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 what are you doing? I, I want this. It's a great wine. When are you going to uh, drink it tonight? Ugh, no, 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 no. It's a great wine. Take that wine home, buy that and set it down for a year, two years, 10 years. It's going to be better and better and better. Uh, but this wine is ready to enjoy today. And so to me, to you, uh, I've never aged a, uh, uh, a mild cigar. There's no reason to age a mild cigar. Uh, medium body, so you can, uh, but I tend to only age full body cigars because I want some of that body to dip down and I want more flavor. So the longer you age those cigars, what you'll notice is your body dips down, but your flavor increases. And so play with it and then see if you, enjoy a cigar that you maybe buy a box and set aside uh, half of that box and smoke the other half right now. But uh, set it aside and maybe mark them a band, smoke in three months, six months, a year. And you experience the difference between that uh, cigar that you smoke today, the one that you buried for uh, three months and one that you buried for uh, six months and the one that you buried for a year and you'll experience that flavor increases over time. 
Thank you. Great question. All right. So this next question is about the tobacco plant. And you've talked the last couple of sessions a lot about the order in which you pick the tobacco from the fields. And the question is, what would happen if you picked the tobacco primings out of order? What would happen to the leaves or the tobacco plant? Well, you're going to upset what you're trying to accomplish. So if we go to the tobacco field and start to harvest from the top Lajero, when you harvest that tobacco too quickly, uh, the body's not there. Uh, so uh, you think you're going, oh, I add that Lajero, I need more body but you harvest that too soon, it's not gonna be there. And some of the uh, other tobaccos, uh, the longer you keep them, it just starts to play with the flavors and all that. So Seiko and all that, if you leave them in a, a tobacco plant too long, it, it's gonna uh, peak that flavor sooner than you want. So that's the reason we tend to harvest in the bottom, the middle and the top. Uh, to allow to use a tobacco the way, way, the way that you want to use it for burning characteristic flavor or uh, a body. So you cannot do that. And you can't, uh, you know, smoke a, a cigar reverse. So you can't not light your head uh, and put the foot of your cigar in your mouth because the way that we place the tobacco in your cigar, we know that... Uh, the tobacco plant, the closer to that, um, the, uh, the, uh, the stalk, more bitter than the tobacco plant. That if you had a tobacco plant, and this is the stalk here, and that's the end of the tobacco plant. If I start to smoke this, it's gonna be bitter throughout my cigar. But if I start at the, the, uh, the end of the tobacco uh, plant and it starts to smoke, by the time you get to this point, it's gonna be bitter, but you're already done with your cigar. So that's the reason we can not harvest uh, from Lajero down because you're going to not have the tobacco that you want to blend with. But I've never been asked that question, a great question. Great question. All right, so Michael would like to know if you ever collaborate with any other blenders from General Cigar. So like specifically, have you ever worked on a cigar with Cohiba to produce a single blend for the two companies? Or if that's something, if you uh, haven't done, if you would be interested in doing something like that. Oh, well, for sure, I would I'd love to do that. But uh, what we'll do is if I'm working on a blend or Cohiba's working on a blend or Punch is working on a blend, I know these guys, I trust these guys, I love these guys. So not, you know, why not share my blend with the guy that's charged of blending for a Macanudo or the guy that's charged a, a blending for Cohiba or Punch? Uh, they can give you some valuable feedback. So we tend to smoke and sample everybody's cigars at uh, General Cigar. We have a, a, pa you know, a panel that uh, when we're launching a new cigar, the panel receives these cigars from whatever uh, company that we're working on or through, and we'll start to feedback and we'll say the target is we're looking for spice, we're looking for body or you know, less body, sweetness, uh, this flavor. And so they can, uh, you know, uh, help me. Uh, you know what, if I was you, I would take that tobacco out and replace it with this and see if that works better. And that's a, a great way to do it too. All right, so Henry is a fan of Candela wrappers and he wants to know if CAO has ever produced a Candela cigar. Uh, I don't think so. The only uh, Candela that uh, I know is on the market for General Cigar is the one that we make for Mecca Noodle. So it's not a popular wrapper. Uh, we think that we're going to reinvent that wrapper. Uh, and uh, some uh, guys, uh, of course, um, try to do it. Uh, I know that um, I think Alan Bradley uh, tried it uh, or uh, continued to uh, launch a uh, cigar with uh, Candela. But uh, uh, right now, I've never asked uh, from the fans of CEO, we want uh, that wrapper. So it, it's that kind of toe to me. I don't think marketing is ever going to say to me, you know what, uh, how about a, a Candela wrapper? Because uh, that was a wrapper uh, very popular in the 60s and 70s and the 50s. Uh, it's just kind of a way now to uh, a fashion, you yeah. know. 
All right, so um, this next question is from David. This is actually a really good question. So last week you did a pro cigar tip. So he is curious if you've got an insider tip or trick, something that you could share with the viewers this week. Yeah, you know what? Uh, one of the tricks I want to share with you guys is uh, cutting a uh, flathead, uh, especially the uh, six by sixty or the seven by seventy, because that's such a big ring gauge. Uh, we typically um, hold on, guys. I'm gonna see if I can uh, take a cutter. And hold on, guys. I'm sorry. So um, uh, an old gentleman, I was do uh, doing an event uh, when I was launching uh, Flathead and uh, I was struggling to open up my cigar. I Typically I use my uh, fingers or my thumb to open a cigar. And uh, I remember I was opening a cigar with my thumb and I cracked the wrapper and he says, hey, uh, you know, Ricky, let me show you a technique I've used. So he took a Flathead uh, six by 60 and what he does is in a 45 degree angle, cut that cigar. And I see if I can show you guys that cut. You see it? And then he did it on the other side and he cut that cigar again. What I noticed when he cut that cigar like that, that bridge doesn't um, tear the, uh, the the head of the cigar, so it doesn't come unravel. And so I thought that technique of that cut was beautiful. And that uh, really allows you to get some airflow, uh, taste the tobacco, but not ruin the cap of your cigar. Because if you cut a cigar too far down, like kind of this, what happens is when you cut it that far down, the wrapper starts to come unravel. And so that's the reason the head is so important. It locks in place your wrapper. And so that is a great technique. And that was one that I wanted to share. So thank you so much for bringing that tip up uh, for me today. But that, that was a tip of, uh, you know, cutting a flat head six by 60 or seven by 70. So Rick, we've got a great question that we could end the night with here. Okay. Um, so if you were stranded on a deserted island, what cigar would you bring with you? You can only bring one cigar. Uh, it would be uh, the Flathead um, uh, Spark Plug. Uh, it's to me one of my favorite cigars. Now, it, it's not the best blend that I've ever created. Uh, but for me, the, the body, the, the uh, aroma, the, the taste, the length of the cigar, the timing, is perfect for yes. me so i love the if i had to go away for about uh you know a week or two uh, i would definitely yeah let me see this one yes that's my one of my favorites too yeah. so that is the cigar that i would uh, go to that uh island and enjoy for a month yeah i would never get tired of that cigar yeah and then one last thing we want to make sure we remind all your viewers to log on to cigar world and enter to win that lighter. I don't know if you've got that Lotus lighter you can hold up. Yeah. But if you just log on to Cigar World, join the actual Cigar World webpage, it'll say log in, click join, and then also join the CAO group and you'll be entered to win automatically. So guys, uh, thank you so much for uh, being a part of this again. I hope that uh, you had fun. Uh, we we're thinking about, I, I had a, a great, uh, you know, interview last week with Doug. I hope I have another guest in line for you. I'm trying to get somebody from the factory to come aboard next week. And so hopefully we can do that. But uh, I just wanted to share my friends with you guys. Uh, I love these guys. Uh, they're always there for me. And hopefully one day you can uh, come to King Tampa and come to the uh, cigar, I mean, the cigar shop. Uh, to my uh, man cave and uh, really meet these guys and sit with these guys and you'll learn how, why uh, I love these guys so much because they're great guys, they're very smart. Uh, they, I, I learned so much about life and family and friendships and business from these guys. So I could never replace our, our friendships. So thank you so much, Gary, again, 
excellent job tonight. Uh, next week, I will put you on the house seat. All right, guys, thank you so much. Enjoy your evening. Be safe. Wash your hands, and we'll get through this together. Uh, kiss your family. Uh, say hello to your friends. Kiss your family. Say hello to your friends, and be safe. Thanks, Rick. Thank you.